Hello, friends, and welcome to the 54th episode of All New Snap Judgments. As always, I'm Roy Rogers, and joining me today is the CEO and future sandworm god emperor of the Snap Judgments podcasting network, the one, the only, Aaron Pulse Glazer. Glazer, my friend. How are you on this lovely summer eve? Hey, I'm doing pretty well. There's something I'd like to say before we get started. Uh, for those of you who hate when this podcast gets, and I'm super air quoting, political, this is not going to be for you. So if you need to not be here for this, or if you need to not like follow my channel, good riddance. But this is important to me, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, a thing that's happening in my life, some of you know I'm a teacher. I teach high school English. Um, I'm also a union representative. I'm the VP of my building. A thing that's been happening in my life, and like I've spent a lot of my most recent years fighting against transphobia to the point where like I've sort of not heard plain old shitty sexism in quite a while, but it hasn't gone anywhere because God forbid we just get better. But um, a thing that's happening is a lot of people seem to think that women aren't people. Women's bodies were so long to them, whether it be touch, whether it be voice, whether it be actions, where they can sort of demand things of women. And as I talk about this, I find out that in the Snap community, this is not something that is not happening, where certain people think that certain streamers who identify as women's either bodies or attention or even their decisions belong to them. And the weakest way I can say this is that's not cool. And the way I want to say this is get the fuck out of our fucking community, you piece of shit. Um, clear this up now. If if you know I'm talking to you or you even suspect I might one day be talking to you, clear this up now because next time I have to do this, I'm doing this as publicly and loudly as possible. And for those of you who are going to come in the comments and be like, where'd you signaling? Go fuck yourself. Let's do this if you would really like to check my credentials on my life. I'm not playing. Treat people like people. Everyone deserves your respect. Everyone is a human being. People have the right to be exactly who and how they choose. If you impugn that for a second, go away. You are not welcome. Fair enough? Thanks. Very fair. All right. And co-signed by me, Aaron. Very articulate. Uh, anyone who followed the debate over the uh, Angela Pride variants can also can see a uh, variant mm -hmm. of the toxicity and awfulness and inhumanity. This, this discourse, I don't have a good transition. I'm usually pretty good at transitions, but that was like really intense, really heavy stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to say we're going to get into our regularly oh, scheduled program. That was when <laughs> the episode was supposed to start. Blazer had to start half an hour earlier. That was my, I uh, forgot that I had that alarm on. I apologize. Uh, all right. So we are going to hop right into it with our very special guest, Aaron, who is joining us this wonderful summer eve. We are going to start with the premier Loki player in all of Marvel Snap, the number one player on last month's Infinite uh, Leaderboard, number two the season before. He's at some like stupidly high rank again this season. And what's painful for me as someone who's falling like a rock, right now is that he hasn't even started to try yet it's tanjo hey tanjo hey how's it going great to see you here how can our friends find you on in marvel snap and around marvel snap so you guys can follow me on twitter or x it's at tanjo or anjo i also have a twitch uh, account but haven't streamed in a while i will try to stream more in on twitch is only tanjo i think cool uh there's one other place you can find tanjo you can go check the infinite leaderboards at like marvel snap marvel snap yeah. com, and then you hit infinite leaderboards and you just look at the top players and then you'll find his name it's crazy you can watch this climb on there although honest to god at this season i don't think anyone's catching zuns uh zuns is a teenager who's on summer break and uh as a teacher zuns is not going to stop playing <laughs> marvel snap right now <laughs> that's funny we are also joined by one of our favorite guests returning after winning the Pursuit Gaming Tournament where they actually paid him. It is Gnome. Hey, Gnome. Hey, guys. It's good to be back. I feel like I was here not that long ago, but uh, always a pleasure to, to be on. 
No. How did how uh, I know how to do this? I swear. How can our loyal viewers find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch at gnome underscore underscore plays or on Twitter uh, at the same handle. Uh, you can also find me kicking around uh, a variety of Snap Discords. Uh, if you you don't probably don't have to look too far to to find me, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's where you can find me. I'm streaming whenever I can in between exams and homework assignments. So uh, yeah. It's obnoxious how young our guests are as old, old teachers and how good they are at Marvel Snap. But it's <laughs> also true? worth noting that our subject today, once we get through like our usual stuff, we're going to talk about the OTA, we're going to talk about the new guards, is how to win at Marvel Snap. And we're going to ask them both how they win so much, how they do so well, and see if we can glean any tips from them. Hmm. Well, before we can dig into the awesome content we have prepped for you all, we just need to remind you how you can engage with us on social media. Uh, first and foremost, we have Elon Musk's uh, wonderful social media platform known as X, formerly Twitter, where likes are now private, friends. So you can like all our posts and no one will know that you are a degenerate, degenerate snapper. So it's great. Just like every single one of Glazer's posts. I know it's a lot of them, but do it over at Snap Judge Cast over on Twitter. Slash <laughs> x uh we are incredibly grateful each and every week to be the official pod casting partner of marvel snap zone and we have a request one that is a, a benefit to you loyal listeners and loyal viewers which is to of course join their discord they have the best large discord in all of marvel snap and we would love for you to click the link Oh, excuse me, click the link to the Discord in the description of this episode below in YouTube or on your friendly neighborhood podcatcher. Our email, yes, that snail mail of digital communications, which was blowing up for Aaron right as we were beginning this episode, is our email, which is snapjudgmentspodcast at gmail.com. But the most important form of social media we have, no, not our defunct TikTok account, enjoy TikTok before it gets banned, is our YouTube. Each and every day, except for Saturdays, when the, the episodes of this show go live. And, of course, multiple times when there's breaking news, Glazer is producing daily Snap Take videos over on our YouTube at Snap Judgments Pod. Aaron? If our loyal listeners were to become our loyal viewers, what would they find on the YouTube right now? So many decks, just like so many decks. Oh, my wife just decided to yell for me. So a lot of decks and then please continue while I figure oh. out what's happening. All right. Last thing we just need to talk about real quick is the Snap Judgments Patreon. All right. Which is patreon.com slash Snap Judgments where you can... Support the work that Glazer does for the community, including with Gunny T and other partners running the Snap Judgment Leagues and did weekly tournaments and all kinds of awesome stuff. So if you want to compete in the kind of events that folks like Gnome are winning, you should definitely join uh, our Discord. It's awesome. It is a reverse pyramid scheme. Glazer actually ends up putting most of the money back out into the community. So it is just a great way to support what he does each and every day over at our YouTube and other places. All right. So now that I'm done vamping to make sure that Aaron is able to join us again, let's dig into this week's card. Cersei, Series 5, 6K tokens. She's a 5-7, seven, so 5 cost, 7 strength. On Reveal. Transform your other cards here into random cards that cost one more if able. All right, Tanjo, as the newcomer to the show, having not been on before, thoughts on Cersei besides the fact that her base art is extremely ugly? <laughs> okay, so first of all, I am I only buy the season pass, so I'm not a huge whale. So I'm kind of low on resources, and I haven't even gotten her yet. But I don't think she's bad. I think she's a pretty decent card. And I feel like people were re overreacting to some tw uh, Twitch clips or stuff like that that was floating around the day she came out. Because she can be a little bit like... She can really lose you the game. But I feel like the 
downside is mitigated by all the upside she can bring. And I feel like she's probably the second best card in the month after Athena. No. I really like this effect. I don't think she's like crazy, crazy good. And I think cards that are this RNG dependent shouldn't be crazy, crazy good, which is like she can pop off. And I really like that she has that ability. But like obviously her inconsistency makes her tough to like just go absolutely wild all the time and for her to just like always win you games. So I really like her effect. Um, I'm always a little concerned that like Snap is going the Hearthstone route of just making everything mm-hmm. RNG. Um, but the uh, I think they did a really good job with designing her. I think the more I play her, the more I realize how many bad Snap cards there are <laughs> in in the game, and you could just hit them like randomly, and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot that was a card that that lost me the game. Uh, thanks, Cersei. <laughs> and uh, but she can also like have really fun high rolls. So I, I really like the design of the card. I think she's quite strong, um, but not insanely busted to the point where it's just frustrating losing to RNG every game. So so quick guess. What random card lost an opponent? The strangest card that I completely forgot existed lost an opponent the game in a Cersei lane. Any guesses? I mean, Destroyer is the obvious choice, but I nope, feel that's like easy. that's... Nope. That's easy, the card yeah. I forgot exists. I can never forget Destroyer exists. Tantra? Guesses? Mm. I don't know. No? Nothing? Roy? I can't just name cards off the top of my head that, oh, that clearly... Man. If you've forgotten an Aaron, then I've definitely forgotten. Tantra? Rhino. Oh. Rhino. Oh. Mm. It was um the double ongoing thing. And, um, yeah, my opponent, like, it gave them Iron Man, and, yeah, I won that lane oh. pretty handily, where it would have absolutely destroyed me. I, I was like, oh my god, wait, wait, is that Rhino? <laughs> like, is that Rhino's music? I was, shit, I forgot Rhino was a card. I haven't seen that card in so long. Uh, I hate Cersei. I think it's so boring. It is, so I like cards that require decision making, and Cersei doesn't require decision making, really. She just sort of requires luck. Um, obviously there's a decision of to play her or not and where to play her, right? You're stacking lanes for her, but that's like the most base like level one decision making in Marvel Snap that there is. You sort of just play cards and then you play Cersei and Hope. And that's I don't know. I mean, I guess the game has to have some level of RNG for like Tanjo not just to win every game, but for the rest of us um, that's just boring. I don't enjoy this card. It is excellent. It is a very good card. It is a very powerful Marvel Snap card, but I don't enjoy it at all. Once weekend missions are done, I fully plan to put it into my uh, virtual binder and never play it again. I mean, she is really fun to watch. When I'm not playing the game and I'm watching somebody else play Cersei, she's very fun. That's pretty pretty cool. Fair. I I like cards that give us moments in the game you know what i mean like cersei gives us those moments that can hit social media and you can have like a uh emotional reaction to so i like cards like that um erosham is coming (laughs) you don't need to immediately it's a different card than erosham come on man like erosham is gonna have those moments though for sure yeah like we're gonna have those moments but they're way less like explicitly random than this like because you uh so they're less explosive too. They're less just yeah, like yeah. everything's going like chaos all at all at once. Parish mm-hmm. are just like I can't believe I drew Corvus and Hella out of this random deck. Yeah, but I'm gonna take a victory lap though. I called this card in all of the times that we've talked about it. Like this is the best. It's a, just a good mid range card. I think it's the most Ben Brode card. I've said this. I think also every time we talked about this card. Like, if you have anything in history, this is like a Hearthstone card ported over to Snap. I think where I disagree with Glazer in the sense that, like, I think it was Glazer, maybe I've been been on this, this, like, I actually think that Marvel Snap's been drifting away from randomness. Like, it feels like there's a lot less cards that have these kind of effects versus, like, what, when the game started, right? It felt like there was a few of these Hearthstone cards kind of sprinkled through, and over time, they've gotten, like, less and less about that. And this is the first time they've dumped one, and it's hugely powerful. Um, and I think it's just going to. I think this is going to go into those KM best style, like mid range 
Jeff Hoagland style, like mid range soup decks, um, just because it is simply a good deck and or a good card. It's a good answer to a lot of like a nihilist garbage. Like it really is just a good mid range card. And it's great for social media, as Gnome said. So I think you be prepared to see a lot of this card going forward for everyone who is in a position to play to spend resources on it. Any further thoughts or are we good to go? I think we want to jump into the big news. All right. Cause like what is overshadowing Cersei? It is this absolutely stacked OTA. So, all right. I actually can't, I got to look specifically got at you. it. I'll tell you. I'll tell uh, you. Hold on. I, I know guys, I'll get it. So, all right. All right. So we've got Professor X. All right. He's been reworked. He is now a 5-2 with the text ongoing. Moving is the only way to add or remove a card from here. Cannonball has been tweaked to have one less power. Hella, everybody's favorite card, speaking of Hearthstone cards, uh, is still a 6-6, six, six, still with the arm reveal, resurrect all cards you discarded to random locations but with the added text with minus two power. All right. Ebony blade has lost the text and its power can't be reduced. So it can still not be destroyed, but it is, can have its power reduced. Go shadow King. Red Hulk has a tweak where he's still, he's still six, but he's now 10 base strength and says when an opponent ends a turn with unspent energy plus Three power. Gilgamesh tied with what? Uh, Phoenix Force, Ghost Spider. Who are the other recent cards that like got immediately tweaked? Black. Oh, they had immediately uh, tweaked? Those are the uh, two. Uh, Gilgamesh. Nimrod. No, Nimrod, yeah. Uh, on oh, reveal, true. plus one power for each other cards in play with increased power, but he's also a base 5-9. Captain America, they're continuing to like try to get you to play with Captain America no matter what. He's now a 3-3. Three, three. Very cool. Uh, Shauna, again, they really want you to play with this card. Her power has doubled. She's now a 3-4. Same text. And then Stegron has been reworked. He is still 4 cost, but 7 strength and says, on reveal, move an enemy card here. One location to the right. Getting rid of the randomness. Speaking so, getting rid of the Hearthstone aspects of this card. Uh, all right. So, Gnome, as our returning guest, tell us your feelings about Prof X, and we'll kind of take each, at least the the sort of like big boys and girls. Professor X, Cannonball, Hella, Red Hulk, kind of there, but like some of them we can move through a bit more quickly. So, Professor X, thoughts, feelings. Hot takes. Uh, I'm happy he's gone. I was not a Prof X enjoyer. I actually had a bit of a mini viral tweet uh, going around that was dunking on uh, Prof X. I think that cards like Prof X, like Old Eliath, I think they're antithetical to uh, Snap skill expression because they uh, their game plans and that the decks they're in really focus on uh, not letting... Like, as soon as you know a matchup, sometimes you just know there's nothing my opponent can do in this matchup. And there are matchups like that, but I think, you know, cards that feel bad like this, they don't make for fun play experience. Um, They don't make for fun metas. I know me and a lot of other players I talked to were having uh, just difficulty brewing in a meta where on turn four often like you couldn't play in a single lane like that really limits what you can play and there should be uh, strategies that like you know limit you know the turn six burst decks like bounce like there should be counters to those decks and I think there are and I don't think it needs to be like you can't play here and then I basically have a guaranteed win in another lane so I'm happy with the change um, I think that people are going to have to get more creative when they want to counter other strong decks. And I think that overall making players more creative, uh, and forcing them to do that is healthier for the meta. Sandra. What? Oh, you're asking my thoughts on prof. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna agree with most, basically everything that Norm said. I think it's definitely a change that was warranted for a long time. And a lot of players were getting really upset with Prof Cannonball. Um, I don't know if he's dead. I'm kind of scared that he's going to come back in like a, some move-based shells, but I don't really think so. Because how prominent uh, Nocturne and Jeff are, especially Nocturne, having the opportunity to just move a 3-5 to his lane now, I feel like he's very strong. And also, they removed the Ravona synergy. And it's still two power, which like two power is nothing. I think prof decks get really good, are really good and well positioned in the meta when they are the only decks that are able to move cards into the lane, like with the change. So if they're running like the move cards, but with how ubiquitous cards like Nocturne and Jeff are, and the fact that your opponents will just have them so often, it makes it so much worse as a prof player to have to go up against those. So if cards like Nocturne and Jeff stay meta relevant, which I assume they were. I don't think he's going to be very good, which is all good. So the European server seems to think that the meta is going to become move decks that have Prof as one of the top end cards. Um, what do you guys think about that top of ladder, friends? I'll believe it when I see it, I guess. I like If it happens, like, sure, that's fine. It seems like Prof X didn't need you're basically, you just made a Prof X deck, but now you have more hurdles for yourself, right? So, I, I don't know. I don't I don't believe in it, but if someone figures it out, then more power to them. Yeah, I don't I don't really see it. I don't think you can actually make it become meta. It can make only like a niche card in a niche deck, but... Like, we have so many early scalers now. We have Angelo, we have Athena, we have uh, Nebula, a lot of cards that just... Uh, already do well in Prof X lanes. So if you like, if Prof X becomes popular again, you just need to think just a little bit on where you want to place every single card. And then if they like get ahead by one power, you just move your Nocturne and Jeff there and it's over. So I, I don't really think you can make it work, especially now with our Ravona. You can't really go like a play that you, it kind of makes sense to go like uh, Ravona into Prof turn four and then a Vision turn five. You cannot do that. So. I don't think so you can prof. support the lane. But nope. Yeah, I was just gonna say prof decks uh really thrive on like locking down the prof lane and then having a card that answers the last lane. So for a while it was Eliath, then it was Cannonball. Like, what is your new I'm gonna win this second lane because I've invested so much into this one lane? Is it Negasonic? Like we're really reaching here if we're trying to find, I think, the new lane win, like the secondary lane winner. Um, so, yeah, I kind of forget that Cannonball straight up doesn't work anymore with Prof. So yes. that's counter synergy. Yeah, that's that's like enough to make it bad. I think. Cool. Yep. I'm gonna listen to them. They better than me. Sounds right. <sighs> yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I think the real villain. I know this might be a controversial plan. And this was always cannonball, like, uh, and so what do we think? Uh, so Andrew, what do you think is cannonball still going to be a meta threat here without the professor X synergy with one less power is cannonball a strong card or did I end up in the end wasting my six K tokens on Sam? No, definitely. I think cannonball is still going to be a strong card, but now mostly on clock decks when you can still, because Cannonball, when you can assure that his effect is going to at least move the card to a lane you don't care about, he's just super strong. So if you're able to lock out lanes with Clog, usually because Storm doesn't work. So it used to be Clog or Prof, now it's just going to be Clog. Or maybe any decks that have space to run Cannonball, because he's just really strong. You can use him to disrupt in like turn 5. His text and one less still power effectively really says... Matter. Yeah, what? his text still effectively says win this lane. Yeah, now pretty much. you just have to figure out how to win the second lane, and without prof, it makes it a lot harder, right? So yeah. that's yeah, I think Tanjo's right. Like he's still very good, and if you really care about winning a lane, Cannonball is still very good at that. I don't think he needed to lose a power though. 
Like, I think yeah, he's was completely weird. fine as a 5'8 if he's not working with Professor X. Does it matter, though? Do we care that much? I, 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 it loses you some percentage of games, right? Like, I, that percentage is probably very small. Like, it doesn't matter all that much, but, like, like you already kicked him. Don't kick him again while he's down. Um, that Ava style deck, I'm going to credit Ava. I know plenty of people played it. That runs like Magic and Dr. Octopus. Do we think that has any home in the meta or no? Do you mean I, the, the one of the, like the mill one? slash junk stuff? Yeah, the mill junk, like debris and Dr. Octopus. Yeah. And... yeah, I think it's fine. Like, I, I think it, it definitely preys on specific decks more than it others. It needs bounce. <laughs> Uh, does it? If if it doesn't hit, like if it can clog that lane and get either like hit monkey or sage, yeah, and still be it, ahead. Yeah, yeah. It preys on some versions of bounce. I think you have to be really smart as the bounce player. But yeah, I think it's a tough matchup for bounce. Um, I think it like pre- it preys on combo, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but cards that are just ubiquitously like playing good cards. Like mid range style or like even Loki, like I don't, I think it struggles into that. So I think it has a place. I don't think it has like a top tier place. I guess. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. It's gonna be a deck, but I don't think it's gonna be one of the best. It's also something I will say that I, without sounding like a conceited asshole, like it. Weaker players struggle into it a lot more than top. It only level beats players. me when I'm playing bounce. But it beats me so bad. I'm just like I'm setting yeah. up that hit monkey. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. It it requires a lot more flexibility. And when you are very like yeah, mm-hmm. and when you're locked into like tough, a fairly linear plan. Yeah, when bounce bounce like is good at being flexible, and when you can no longer be flexible, it really struggles. So, I mean, what's nice against it is that it really does want magic and. I don't think I have any decks that don't run Noctred anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's Noctred's crazy good. She's just like Jeff 2.0. Yep. I think, I don't know if I fully believe this, but I don't not think this. So it's good enough to say. It's not, I don't think it's worse than Jeff in the current Professor X weird place. Yeah, that's fair. She might even be better than Jeff now. Right? She, like, she is that crazy? An argument for sure. There's definitely an argument for it. I I don't know. Jeff's like whole Jeff thing definitely. where he can play it. Like the whole play part of his text mm-hmm. is very important. Um, but like there are very often times when like the location change just straight up wins the well, game. So but even not just the location change, the f- I, although Nocturne lost me eight because it did give me bar with no name earlier today. Um which, which was painful but yeah look whatever uh the threat of activation too the are they going to take away this location is insanely strong even when you don't end up using it to take away that location like i've had people play iron man not on locations that or like cards as such where they would not otherwise play them when i have nocturne on the board on the theory that like well they're clearly nocturne there and then i just say okay thank you now that's a lane i win right like that's a lot of power for a card the threat is often stronger than the execution with Nocturne. All right. Roy, any uh, cannibal thoughts, or are we on to Ella? No, uh, let's talk about Hella. All right, now, I think even more than Professor X, I think Hella has in, in, caused more whining in Marvel Snap than I think uh, any other card since our everybody's favorite Purple Cloud. Is the Hella Menace finally slain? Or is a 18 strength Infinite still winning lanes just as much as a 20 strength Infinite in a lane? Uh, I think she will definitely be m- more niche. Uh, I think she'll feel a lot more like she did in the old times where she's kind of like a high rolly deck um, that you... Like, the problem... With Hella recently, she just got so consistent, right? So, hey, hey, I th- I'm sorry. Something just happened, and I don't think I'm... I'm going to forget to say it if I don't say it now. Nice. Happy birthday, Dubos. 
Yeah, I was. Yeah, happy birthday! I'm so to sorry. Us. I just saw it and I was like, "Fuck!" If I don't say this now, I'm never gonna remember. Happy birthday, friend! Hope you have an awesome one. All right, continue. Sorry, um, my bad. No, it's okay. I was just gonna say, I feel like she's gonna be more high roll. You definitely. There are decks that like can point slam with Hella that aren't like tribunal and mm-hmm. and or they get close when Hella low rolls. So I feel like Hella is gonna definitely have to high roll, and for that reason. Like Husky's style of Hella, I don't know with that didn't run Corvus. That deck got hit a lot harder than the Corvus versions because the Corvus versions are greedy but less consistent. Whereas Husky climbed to rank two because his list was just so consistent and he was also very very good with it. Um, I don't believe but, it. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, he yeah. So like. Like I said, Hell is gonna have to get greedier, and I think it, it's a it's a pretty big hit. Yeah, I don't think there's much less to say. He just pretty much said everything. That I think yesterday I was like, yeah, maybe Hell survives, but then I, I talked to Husky and he said there is no chance that he is backing on Hell on the SSM list. Because I, I agree, like you, you sacrifice the the high rolls for your consistency, so you're running cards that just are gonna hurt you if you bring it back, like a four seven black cat. It's not that impressive anymore. And there were a lot of games uh, against Hella that you just lose by a little bit of points. Like, you can talk mm-hmm. about the Infinots, but usually, you, if you go, if you're like doing something like at least decent in the game, you can try to mitigate the RNG. So I feel like usually it comes down to uh, two points sometimes, like two, four points, and that's going to make a difference. I mean, like, Infinite's terrifying, and Infinite isn't hurt bad, but Death becomes a 10 power discard, right? And, like, I can play Call Obsidian or Sasquatch or whatever just fine, right? And compete with that lane. That's not a big deal. And Black Cat as a 7? I got plenty of cards that can match that 7. Shit, my 2 drops match that 7, right? Like, there's plenty of ways to match the power. Basically, like, if they're not discarding Infinite, I'm not scared. Yeah. Or like yeah. most of the most like even Noki can compete on points if they're not discarding Infinite. If they're discarding yeah. Infinite, they're still scary, right? But without Infinite, I think that like this is a humongous hit. Also, was did was it Black Cat like a four seven previous like didn't yeah. she used and to she be a four seven? <laughs> well, no, I think so she was a three seven. Yeah, when is she a three seven? Oh, she yeah. might have been. Yeah, because she was in Surfer. Yeah, you're right. I mean, not you're in right. Surfer, like the good Surfer, but she was in. Yeah, with like the discard random Surfer. That yeah, you're right. All right. Do we need to talk about Ebony Blade? Uh, I think it's worse. Shadow it, King's real good. Is that any other takes? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really know I, why they did that. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I do. I, I think it was so that the Hella style gameplay was discouraged. No, in general. I bet you, I don't know what card. I know exactly why, and I'm like completely convinced of this. Every time they do this, and we're like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" Um, it's future proofing. There's something they're going to release that they want Black Knight not to be around for. I don't know what yet. Yeah, but okay. I would bet, I, like maybe the um. Oh my god, what's that card's name? Maybe like Wiccan bullshit was like proving too strong in testing, but something internal with Black Knight is proving like fairly busted. Like, oh, let's add a counter nice and early. Who knows? We got those dead was, cards. So yeah, I will say something quickly. Uh, I've played the most Black Knight I have in a long time since the OTA, and <laughs> that's because Glazer beat me to it. But Dubos made a really fun uh, Black Knight it. list. He didn't share it with me fast enough. I he's been it. he's been he told me not to like say too much about it because he wants to like keep tweaking it before he like well, quote he unquote releases it. So it. yeah, uh, without letting me do a video on it first. So thanks, Dubos. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, ha- happy birthday to us. No, he cooked a really fun one. So I like it's really good. It uh yeah, it it's still a good card. I the change sucks because I don't think Midrange Black Knight was in a good spot anyways. Mm-hmm. But um you know, Black Knight's still a fun card. Alright. Red Hulk. Alright, Tanjo. This card's been a menace as well. Um is it still the best top end card in the game, or is it been taken down a notch? Here, a whole notch. No, I feel like it's still it's still the best six drop of the game, probably. Uh, like a six sixteen is already very good. It's not that big of a difference. So, 
I think like the nerf it's kind of I don't really think it was necessary but it really feels bad to play against Red Hulk when you can't really uh, mitigate his effect. I usually don't struggle against him but I can see like the lower pool players or like the non-infinite players just getting really annoyed that they just can't really beat this gigantic dude. Yeah, yeah I feel like he's still gonna be strong. Doesn't but... struggle to curve out. <laughs> Shocker! <laughs> it's my curve out or not, right? Like people in my videos comment all the time when, like, because oftentimes there's like two one drops in a deck, and I'm like, please skip turn one. And they're always like, but Red Hulk will grow. I'm like, what the fuck do I care? <laughs> if I've got a better turn for it later, right? Red Hulk's either gonna beat me or it's not. I'm not gonna play suboptimally to potentially stop a Red Hulk. I don't know is there. Ah, yeah. uh, I mean, the main thing is Red Hulk can sometimes feel hopeless. Like, if you're executing your game sure, plan run. and it's growing. I know. I'm just telling what some people feel that I'm I'm just telling you, Glazer. So, um, any other thoughts about Red Hulk? He's still a bit of a menace. Yeah. I think he's actually it's better so in the sense of, like, when you top deck him late in the game and he hasn't gone off, that 10 is, be- 10 is better than 9. So... Well, and one trigger is exactly the same, right? Yeah. And two triggers is a whole negative one power, which is very unlikely to matter. It's three triggers before it starts, like, actually affecting the board in a meaningful way most yeah. of the time. Yeah, usually when I see the first trigger, I already play, play a main game out, so I mm-hmm. don't leak any energy. So in that sense, it's basically the same thing. I almost would rather see the one trigger, you know what I mean? And know it's there than not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, all right, Gilgamesh. Gnome, is he more playable with gaining a two old power, which is a significant buff? I mean, did he get better? Yeah, he got, he got, <laughs> he did get better. <laughs> two points is is definitely something. It's also so funny that he's just strict upside abomination. If you're not playing Patriot, which no one plays abomination in Patriot anyways, like he's just pure power creep on. Uh, <laughs> that card which is i mean not that they're really worried about power creeping like the starting deck it's just mm-hmm. like i don't know sometimes card games are like oh this we can't make it strictly better now this is just straight up strictly better <laughs> so that's very true yeah. yeah he's good i've definitely i've been playing uh i've been seeing a lot more gilgamesh and he he's a chunky boy when he comes down so yeah i don't know if it's enough to make him meta but Another change, the Shannon's change mm-hmm. might yeah. help him. So, like, overall, f- plus four powers in Zoo decks. That's, that's pretty solid. I don't know if he's going to... If it is enough to make him very good, but... I mean... Yeah, I, I've been seeing a few Gilgamesh, like, plus 15 power. That's a little bit annoying. So, the problem is, you can tell where he's going to be played, and if you count, you know how big he's going to be. And like yes. that makes him really hard to win cubes with, right? Like I've beaten him a lot and I've run from him a fair amount, but like he's not beating me. He seems like, huh, if they drop Gilgamesh in that lane that is very obviously Gilgamesh, I can or can't win. And if I can yes. win, then I snap and stay. Right? Because they're Zoo's... clearly gonna slam that. Yeah, Zoo is really it's... bad at yeah. cube equity because like, they use mm-hmm. so many other board states and you're like well can i beat a blue marvel or can i beat like a gilgamesh yeah. yep and like you you know where their final cards are going because by like turn five they two spaces the entire left. board yeah <laughs> so it's like all right so here or here and then like you just take the fucking 50 50 and if the 50 50 yeah. beats you fine but most of the time it's not even hard to read the 50 50 because they're playing zoo in the first place and that tells yeah. you probably enough yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm i going to stick with Gilgamesh is cool, but bad. I, mean, bad I think it's probably playable. Too strong. I think it's playable. Yeah, I honestly bad think is too it's strong. A, cool, but mid. Yeah, like a B minus C plus deck. I think mm-hmm. that's, it's got a, like, it'll, you'll go up against it and you'll lose games. So I think that's a fine spot. But, but like, yeah. but had cool zoo decks and like now they're all Gilgamesh boring shit. Uh, yeah. I, hey, but but we'll but we'll find something. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, but I'm sure, but will. Um. Uh, all right. So, Aptin, America, and Sean. I think we just take these two together. Do we care about? Do we Does, care about any of these last three we, cards? Does anyone have a hot take about the last three? Yeah, yeah I was gonna do Sekron's own separate thing because this is a pretty serious rework of Sekron. But we could take this bottom row of Cap, Shauna, and everybody's favorite uh, Dino Man. 
Stegron. Thoughts, guests? Tanjo, you got anything for us here? Any any deep thoughts about these three cards? No. I don't <laughs> think they will be playable. I mean, Shanna is kind of playable in Zoo, but besides that, I don't think it really changes much. Fair. No? No, I have nothing. I wish Stegron is good. He's not still, so. Yeah. Also, yeah. Even I, I can, 4 7, yeah. but. I can explain Stegron's problem in like one sentence. It's not where he moved the card, but what card he moved that's the problem. And you still can't control what card he moves. Like That's so why you can't like, plan around it. Cannonball is a better mm-hmm. card. He's a whole, They're the same power. He's a whole oh. extra energy, but he specifically targets a card. So yeah. he will you need to know what? Better. Yeah. Where, where is nice, right? Like, I'm not, like, shitting on knowing where, right? But, like, it's so much less important than knowing what you're hitting when you're making a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, so that brings us to the end of the OTA. Glazer, what questions do you have for our awesome special guests? We're going to do four questions of winning and snap on ladder and four questions on winning and slap in tournaments. Because I don't know if you know this, but Tanjo was the number one player on ladder last season, number two of the season before, some stupid high number. Let's assume that it's number two of the season, number three of the season before. Yeah, Just, you, it's been it was like three, a, yeah. Yeah, a series of ridiculously high numbers that mean I'm good at climbing on ladder. Gnome is like some scrub who just sits in the top 50 all the time. Like, he's not even, you know, good. He's just in the top, like, 0.0001% of Marvel Snap players. So, like, how good is that, really? So, wash. let's talk. <laughs> wash. You're like Lambie, you're washed. Where, where's JD yeah. back? Uh, all right. So, what's the single best? And, um... I don't care who to start with. Let's start with Tanjo. What's the best single best ladder climbing tip you got? Or if you want more than one, no one's going to poo poo that. That's a good question. Um, I mean, I feel like the most important thing is just know the meta decks and know what you want to do against each and every one of the decks. Because when you know the decks, it, nothing really sticks out as a surprise and you don't really lose eight cubes that often. Usually, if I lose eight cubes, it's going to be to some, like, RNG or card that wasn't supposed to be there, like a random generator card. Because when you're aware of what you're facing and what you're supposed to do, usually you just do just do decently and climb steadily, steadily and you don't really tilt so that much. I've got an important question because a lot of people ask me this and I struggle to put it into words. What does having a plan against specific decks mean? Like, let's say, pick a deck that you're playing against another meta deck. It can be anything. I don't really care. Describe what having a plan means. I mean, usually it means like when you're supposed to snap and when you're supposed to retreat. So I know that if I'm playing Loki and I'm playing against a destroy deck and they snap me, I mean, I usually know who plays destroy, but that assume you don't know. So if they snap you, you stay because your hand is decent. But it, usually you have to, like, against destroy, you have to try to Cosmo their lane. You have to try to Red Guardian the Deadpool. So you go to the game knowing that. And know if you do that, you probably win. If you don't, you might lose. Then you have to know which cards they use in the top end. And you got to know, like, roughly how much power Null is. What are they going to do? So... You just like play in the lanes that you feel like are gonna benefit you most. So like dodging the lanes that they're overly committing. I don't. I don't know. It's kind of hard to put in the words, but that's why we're usually just yeah. Usually just get an so have let, a, a broad idea and try to understand what's your winning plan. Let's stick with that example then. Um, it's turn two. You've only drawn two cards in the game. Um, you know you have Red Guardian, and you know locations are meaning that it's likely to be one spot that they're playing their Deadpool slash whatever cards in. You haven't drawn Red Guardian, and they snap. Do you run? Do you run any other tech cards? You have the tech card, but it's not in your hand. I mean, if you only run the Red Guardian and don't have, like, uh, Shang-Chi or Shadow King, you, pro- you have to run there. Like, there's not much you can do. Okay. I want to make that clear, right? Like, you don't have the card, even if you run the card, unless you have multiple answers, it's worth getting the hell out of there. Because remember, there's some people listening to this podcast who are sitting, like, 
there's someone listening to this podcast like who's top five, right? Who's like, yeah, obviously. And there's someone listening to this podcast who's struggling for infinite, who really needs that needs that lesson. All right, same question, but for you, no. Oh, uh, for me, the biggest thing I've noticed, um, is immediately recognizing so like tanja said like immediately recognizing like what your opponents are playing and what their output range is but also what that means for your deck so i've noticed some players like will execute they know their deck's game plan really well and they will strive to execute it every single time without understanding the context of the match so that means you know maybe making a bad tempo play saving cards for later turns in a matchup where it's a lot more important versus, you know, making the, I guess, you know, most efficient tempo play against in matchups where it's like less and more like basically understanding how your deck matches up into different decks and what game plan you have to change based on your matchup. And that comes with a lot of experience. You're not going to know what cards are more important in some matchups right off the rip. Um, so I guess the secondary thing will be like, pick a deck, understand its matchups, play it enough that you do understand the matchups and um, like playing a deck you feel comfortable with will always help. Like I definitely have decks that are my like comfort decks that maybe they're not tier one, but I've played them so much that I understand them well enough, like so well. And I understand all the matchups very well. Um, So I'm just more comfortable playing and you'll just do better when you're in your comfort zone, right? If you're not trying to like figure stuff out on the fly. So, yeah, that's my advice. Can I present a claim for you guys? Yes. Yeah. What you just said is really hard for a lot of people to do. Like, um, yep. I struggle with it when I'm not like, like if I'm at work and trying to play, I will autopilot. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just be like, well, fuck, someone said something to me. There goes those four cubes. Because, um, you know, I was just like, here's the card you play on this turn instead of thinking that kind of thing through. I think the best deck to learn this with, if you're really struggling with it, and this is the claim I'd like you to respond to, is not Loki, but Surfer. Because Surfer is very close to a very consistent pattern, but where and how you play, like, are you going Brood or Hope or Shaw or when are you doing these things, especially if you drop Forge, is really, really important and really context dependent. Agree? Disagree? What? Yeah, that's hilarious because I've been playing so much Surfer recently. And I also agree. Like, the matchups are... Like, for example, I run Mobius in my mm-hmm. Surfer deck. It's the lowest power three cost I run, right? There are matchups where you never drop the card because he's straight up useless in your matchup. And there are cards where it wins you games. Like, when I played Tanja, mm-hmm. although I don't <laughs> still don't think it wins me enough games for it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously, like, it's, it's so- there for your Loki matchups. It's there to stop their Mockingbirds. Can, can I say something ridiculous? Tendra is the single player I most hate running up against. Yeah, he's up there uh, for me, t- too. T- Tendra and, and Ava are like, when I play them, I'm like, oh, fuck you. Every game. Just like, what are we doing here? I don't know how to play against you. Just stop. You win. All right, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Tendra, do you agree or disagree on the surf right Yeah, I do agree. I think uh, if you, f- you have to find a deck and you have to understand that there are multiple paths you can take and why you should take each one that's that's a good example i will also say you have to like ask yourself why you want to climb you know what mm-hmm. i mean like i feel like people want to climb for like the wrong reasons sometimes like you said like you're just playing a game and like someone talks to you and you lose four cubes like i mm-hmm. assume like that's oh, doesn't give a shit. break your mental right <laughs> exactly so it's like, laugh. i don't give don't a yeah don't let like I mean, losing like don't climb ladder just because you want a higher rank because then when you don't get a higher rank and you like lose some games, like you're just going to every uh, subsequent game is going to be worse because you're tilted. So ask yourself like why you're climbing ladder. If it's just for like personal achievement, like that's the right reason. Um, if it's because you feel like you deserve a rank or you need a certain rank, like that's not going to help. So, so you don't need to be a higher rank in this game. Just, yeah. I mean, our, our guests know this because I talk to both of them all the time, but like, Dear viewers, last season I finished at around rank 330. I usually finish at around rank 10,000. I don't care. I don't try and climb. But because I do the channel and I do all the decks and shit, I was like, you know what? For one season, I had a really unstressful few weeks at work. And I was like, maybe I can actually climb right now. And I like the meta. I really, really like that leech meta. Because, I don't know, the game starts to feel samey and then I stop caring. You know what I mean? 
Um, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but like when the game gets really samey and solved for a long period of time, I no longer care about climbing at all. Um, so toward the end of the season, I was ready to mentally check out as it was just like, yeah, I know it's like Loki and hell. It's the same four decks and that bores me to tears and I don't care about climbing anymore. But like, I wanted to prove something to myself. I had a feeling that like for the purposes of the channel, if I'm going to say, I think I know what the best things are, I should prove that I can compete at a relatively high level at least once and then move on. And I am currently ranked 3000 and could not possibly give a shit less. Like there's like, I know that like if over the weekend I was like, huh, I'm going to take a nap and not play when I'm exhausted, not play when I work and try and climb that that's a thing. But like, if you need to prove that to yourself, find the time to prove that to yourself but if you're stressed about work if you're stressed period like if you're stressed about the game you're probably not going to climb also video games shouldn't cause you stress like, you out they shouldn't stress you out outside of like playing the video like it's okay to be emotional about the game and like want to win and then when you like be disappointed but don't be stressed about the game outside of when you're playing the game i feel like that's just a general rule for <laughs> like mental of life your, yeah like it's a video game let's like have some like i climbed a crazy amount yesterday because i was having so much fun like with the meta and i hadn't touched ladder in like three days like i had basically just been doing my missions and like mm -hmm. playing other games and like focusing on important life stuff and um but like then, yesterday i just had i wanted to play like i wanted to play the game and it and i was having fun and i was playing a deck i liked and i ended up climbing like 75 ranks so yeah i was <laughs> so and, yeah. it, unless you love loki like tenjo does like the metas are going to be better and worse for you because loki always works right yeah <laughs> the, oh, don't <laughs> like loki you know what meta is a good loki meta everyone since they printed it except like one that one like blob thanos one right um ever and even that wasn't terrible uh but like unless you have very specific tastes there's gonna be metas that are to your taste and metas that are not don't freak out if it's not all right yeah um are there any archetypes i mean you can Oh, wait, I didn't actually ask question two. Uh, this is a Tantra specific question because people keep asking me this. And like, I'm good with Loki, but I'm not like an expert, right? If you specifically wrecks people in a tournament by getting them to ban a deck you don't play, right? Um, <laughs> Tanjo, what is the Loki snap pattern as best you can put it into words? Because people keep asking me and I'm like, uh, like for like 70% of matchups, it's when I have a draw card or quinjet plus loki is there more to it than that what is it yeah that that's that sums it sums it up pretty nicely first of all you, de you definitely need to know your matchup so from the top of my head like if you're playing against like uh especially c3 and hello they're usually the worst matchups so even if you get against mm -hmm. c3 you're not even supposed to loki because you're just gonna get garbage cards but against hella you you're supposed to quinjet loki sometimes but you never snap. Most games, if you have a solid early game and your opponent appears to be playing a deck that is like Loki friendly, you just play Queen Jet Loki and you have to snap. Snap before playing Loki because I know that kind of doesn't really make a difference if you snap turn 4 or turn 5, but when people see the Loki, they get scared. So snap before the Loki because sometimes you get some like some cubes from people that are not paying attention to the game. But what makes a deck Loki friendly? Yeah, so most decks are Loki friendly, but <laughs> uh, it do has they twelve have, cards. Do they do they have good cards in it? Yeah. <laughs> so you're mean, just for the record. Yeah, everybody so. <laughs> probably knows this, but most decks that like don't have a very specific synergy, like C C three, you should be able to Loki with ease. Like every single deck, every Annihilus deck is very good to Loki Queen Jedi. You're supposed to do snap into that every single time. Um, every mid range deck, Loki destroys it. That's why you don't see that as many mid range mid range decks, mid range decks nowadays. But yeah, I don't really have aggressive to the battle right now because of the changes. But used to be, usually you just if you get a solid hand and you play Queen Jedi Loki, you you you're supposed to snap. I, another deck that is pretty bad, good into Loki, I would say, is like 
Thor's decks. Thor's decks are really annoying to play. Yeah. Because you don't really get the payoffs. Unless you Loki on 4 and you can play play Queen Jet Loki on, on 4 and then you can play like Beta Ray Bill and Jane Foster in the same turn. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that seems pretty good. <laughs> But yeah, mostly you just right. wait, you get Queen Jet Loki, you snap. You get like a very good early game, like Angela Kitty, Angela Elsa, uh, Nalthine and stuff. So if you get a very good early game, you can snap as well. You don't need to play Loki to snap. You can just, if you see that you're winning the game and you, get this, you have the scalers, you have the tech, you can snap as well. Obviously, you snap on coastal cards that are just broken. And when you're the game, you have to snap on that. You snap on Cable, getting something good. You snap on Cosmo, you snap on Shang. Yeah, it what, depends on yeah, what can, you play. I just know one of the scariest things in the game is that they play Cable, get the card, and immediately snap. It's yeah. Brutal. yeah you, it's especially, like, uh, yeah. especially when you rolls the turn and they've, they've already snapped, which means they saw yep. the card and snapped. That, that's frightening, yeah. I just had a question for Tanjo. Are you back on the Angela Kitty stuff? Because you, for weren't you playing... It was uh, not yet. non-Angela Kitty. Like, the deck list I brought to the tournament, I thought was your list, and it wasn't Angela Kitty stuff. Yeah, I wasn't playing last season. But now Thena came out, and I'm playing Thena. So <laughs> you're back on, like, Angela Kitty stuff? Yeah, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna play Thena, you have to play Angela Kitty. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay, so you were you were off of it for, like, last season. Yeah, right? last season I, I was just playing uh, deck cards and Loki. Yeah. Are you on the yeah. same basic deck as Zuns? Uh, is running Sarah control, isn't he? Yeah. No, yeah, he's running two decks. He's alternating between that and Loki. Oh. I, I don't know what like he's that. he says he's only playing Sarah, but he's playing both. We talk. Um <laughs> <laughs> Like it's I, still mostly Sarah, right? Like it's like ninety percent Sarah, but like sleeping on the Loki that also climbs at <laughs> number sure, one. Yeah, I'm like sure the works. Loki's doing just fine for him too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's since it's, it's like the obvious deck. It's just like here's a bunch of deck cards and then Sarah. And and oh, sorry, not Sarah. And then uh, Angela and Thena and Kitty. Yeah, seems good. Uh, I think Noki, uh, Loki is starting to look more like Noki because of yeah. because of Thena. Pretty much, yeah. they're very similar again. Except one runs the best card in the game. I think Noki was just a great showcase to how like you just take this incredible shell and you can just win games without it. And they're like, well, you can win games without the like the the all-star card you know what i mean That's... like it's still a good show it's just a, it was just a showcase of how good loki is as a deck without the like flagship card it's like a really good point because it also taught you that there's a lot of loki games where you don't really want a loki right yeah. like where you don't at least have to loki a lot of loki players are like if i don't see loki how do i win i'm like i don't know play all the good cards yeah play right, the like... other 11 cards that are also just unreal <laughs> yeah really did you know that Marvel Snap is a card, a game that has a lot of very good cards? And in Loki, they all synergize. Yeah. All right. Besides Loki, if you wanted to climb on the infinite ladder or just to hit infinite, what archetypes are good right now? Um, this right is a now. tough question. Because yeah, we just have the OT. There's so many yeah, because a brand new meta. Yeah, bra- A, brand new meta. B, pocket metas, right? Which are mm-hmm. a thing yeah. in Marvel Snap. Um, and then see it's like there's no one size fits all i feel like like i said earlier pick a deck you're comfortable with that isn't just completely f tier like i get that i don't know why like someone would think that actually climbing would be that but like pick a deck you're comfortable with pick a deck you enjoy playing um personally i've been playing a lot of surfer recently uh probably because like i kind of realized how cracked it was after that um Mm -hmm. It went undefeated in the tournament I played in. Um, and I've been messing around with like Dark Hawk, any stuff. I've been messing around with like a bunch of different stuff. But yeah, pick decks you enjoy. Uh, Loki, if you want an easy answer, Loki is obviously like one of the best. Loki is an easy climbing to play. Right now. It's not Loki easy to play. It's so yeah. hard to play. It is so hard, hard to play. play. Actually, yeah. There's, so maybe Loki's there's not the best. versions of Loki that I'm bad with. Yeah. Maybe Loki's a bad if you're just trying to like, yeah. Because when you first pick up the deck, it's pretty difficult. So I don't know. Depends on what you're looking for. Like if but you want to get better, it's a good deck. Advice for Loki: If you want to get good with Loki, play Noki. Yes, that's, that's, that's fair. 
Yeah. Right? Like, if you can learn how to play the Loki deck without yeah. Loki, then when you can play it with Loki, you'll be okay. Yeah, I feel like Noki is like the level one. It's like, how do yeah. all these good cards synergize? And then level two, and I mean, Tadra can probably speak this well, more, is like, how to use the card Loki effectively. Because some people misuse the card Loki mm -hmm. in like different matchups, I, right? Is that fair? I've lost a lot of games of Marvel Snap. Like where I'm just like, again, I play a fair amount at work where I'm just like trying to get dailies done. Like while like people are around me and and then, like, when, if I play at night, I'm trying to organize a video and talk to 17 people, right? Like, that's part of doing a video every fucking day. So, like, I'll sometimes just be, like, drop Loki on habit. And then I look down, I'm like, did I just get rid of my Red Guardian and Cosmo? And, like, guess what? I lost that game, right? And, like, almost no matter what Loki got. Like, please yeah. don't Loki mindlessly. Yeah. There are decks, like, I, I really like beatdown decks, which are just, like, mm -hmm. decks that put a ton of stats all over the board and are sometimes vulnerable to tech cards, and I don't run tech cards in my beatdown deck, so when I see the other Loki come down and I'm at, like, such a advantageous board state already, because beatdown thrives on just, like, tempo, 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 right? So if well, you are winning the tempo battle and they Loki, and you they just lost all the tech cards that you might have been worried about, like, mm -hmm. those are matchups where it's just, like, you know I mean, and Loki does a very good job at coming back from that tempo because they just play your cards cheaper. So it's obviously context dependent, but yeah. Well, like even in beatdown decks, like Red Guardian fits right. Like a three five is perfectly mm -hmm. good in a beatdown, right? And um, mm -hmm. the other card I really like in beatdown decks of um, tech cards is Shadow King because I can still stay ahead in tempo and then be like, look, a two drop that takes that's like plays for fifteen power. Thank you. Yeah. Tanjo. Any, what would you climb with if you couldn't climb with Loki? <laughs> well, that's a good I question. Quit the game. I mean, I, I, I can I play basically anything sometimes. When I'm not when I'm not playing Loki, I, I don't really mind. Like I, I play Loki because I like playing it, but mm -hmm. sometimes I I get tired. Believe me. Uh, I don't know. Depends on the context. Like if you want well, to climb to infinite, now. Every, everyone knows by now that if you want to go to climb to infinite you pretty much can use any deck so just pick one of the like most popular decks you can just play destroy or discard or surfer yeah these decks are just kind of like if you're going to climb higher up they're very face up but lower down you can just snap badly and still get rewarded rewarded oh, did y'all notice that crazy is ranked number four again is he back on his grind? I, I guess know he, like, so. He took last season kind of off, didn't he? Yeah, he uh, specifically was super pissed because the previous season he was number one. Uh, and he didn't show up. The infinite leaderboard didn't show up, and yeah, he was really upset. He was like, yeah. I don't know how upset he was, but he certainly, in our conversations, like, I don't live in his head, right? But he certainly did not, did not seem pleased with that and was like, yeah. specifically cited that as the reason he wasn't trying last season. You can't I mean, trust like, Tetra, the, you, you can't trust the leaderboard though. He's not for yeah. yeah. I'm ahead of yeah. him. Well so do you know how you check I check the leaderboard? I open the infinite leaderboard and then I go through each different yeah, um, that's what region do. and I recheck because I don't want to mislead people when I say number three deck. Right? Like I'm gonna make sure that it's number three. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I think it's like six or seventh. Let yeah. me check right now. Am I on the leaderboard? Uh no. My name is disappeared. So the so, leaderboard won't yeah. show me. It's fun. Um, like it won't let me log in and show me. I have to manually check my game, check my snap points, then check the leaderboard for my snap points. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I really like it, it a lot. Great leaderboard. It's definitely frustrating. I think Tanja, you had a tweet about it, about like how you were frustrated with the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's. Yeah, keep going. Well, I just like, I th I think it is frustrating for people who. Obviously, Second Dinner doesn't care that much about Snap being a competitive game, mm -hmm. but for the people that do like want to, you know, see the results of their efforts and they do care about climbing, like it is a little frustrating just to like not have anything to show for it. And maybe you shouldn't be playing games just to like have this number and, you know, get internet points for it. But at the same time, it's you know, you want something for your effort because there is no oh. actual rewards for climbing the leaderboard. 
So right, you don't get anything. Par- part of the reason I don't care this season is because I wasn't on the infinite leaderboard last season. I didn't exist. Yeah, I compared my snap points to the various different places and did an average. That's why I say three fifty ish. I could have been four hundred. I could have been three twenty. Right? Like, how the fuck do I know? Yeah, I'd have to I was like actually, genuinely I'm, count every single. I made person. it. I made it on last season. Holy, I didn't even realize that. I know the season before I didn't. Uh, but like, it's just so dumb that you have to like. You're just like, am I gonna appear on the leaderboard today or yep. this season? No, I feel like, like the biggest issue now as well is it's getting delayed again. So the oh, snap points are wrong. I I usually am one game behind now on the leaderboard. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No. I so yeah, it's, yeah. Like you, yeah. It's you can't really check. I know you mean. So, yeah, I was like. I feel like it's always been more than one game for you. It's, you feel like it's only been a game though. No, for me, before? it's been a game. But like the leaderboard was fine oh. for a while before it gets it got all glitchy again. They kind of figured it out. I feel like no, no. It was working. No, I, I don't think to, so. It used to work. Like, I feel like it used to work better. Ago. I think Tanja was right. For a bit, yeah, like, okay. I feel like it worked better. Um, yeah, but last season I, I was trying to manage my rank, and I wasn't sure actually where everybody was. So in-game, I yeah. got first, like, 4 SP off what Sizer was. So in the leaderboard, if he was, like, 40 SP uh, above me, and I was actually in front of him because the game is always right. So <laughs> that's a little bit frustrating. Because uh, I didn't want to play on the final day, but I wasn't sure if I needed to because the leader buddy showed uh, X amount of SP that I knew it wasn't right. Yeah. For me, it's less important because, like, Tanjo's directly competing with, like, the top. For me, it's, mm-hmm. like, with what rough area am I finishing? And, but it's still nice to know, like, if I actually crack, like, like one season I tried to crack top 20 and I had no idea the entire time like whether I was actually top 20. I mean I knew in the game, but it's like what what threshold am I trying to hit here? Where am I trying to go? And mm. but it's a lot less like direct comparison in Tanjo's oh. case when he's like he's worried about like one person, I guess. Yeah. Well like Whereas, a decent a decent thing to do to try and climb is to worry about your snap points, not your ring. Yes. Right, yeah. like my goal as I was climbing was always just like I just want to hit the next hundred rank of snap points, the next yeah. hundred more snap. Points. Yeah, that's a very like good advice that everybody should take. Like if yeah. I if that put me ahead of people, that was great. Sometimes it fucking didn't, which was obnoxious, right? <laughs> but like often it did. Um, all right, how do you choose a deck and learn to pilot it? If there's a brand new deck you want to learn, um, you think might be good. How do you know if it's good? How do you choose to pilot? it? Well, you just, I don't know if people are You're saying it's like, good. Fucking play it, bro. Yeah, it's probably good if <laughs> people are saying it's good. If I see something that it looks fun and people are saying it's good, I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna like in the group chats and ask my friends if it's a good deck, if I should try it. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna like, you can watch the YouTube videos that KM does weekly on the best decks. Is there usually a good place to start and feel? And see the decks are working right now. So, and how you learn to pilot it? That's a trickier question. You can try to watch streamers that are playing it, but that's not very reliable. But yeah, if you if you're like in paying attention to the game and the meta, you you can probably figure out by yourself what the deck is trying to do and how to pilot it. Yeah. KM Glazer both make like Yeah, I, mean, I should I should probably talk about that. <laughs> you don't have to it's fine. They're too. here, they know about me. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, for me it's it's like if if I'm really comfortable with the archetype, I'll take it straight to ladder because I don't like I'm comfortable with it. But if it's like something real wacky, maybe I'll jump into a couple conquest games just to get my feet out from under me. No, I can't um, stand conquest. I'm never playing conquest. You can you don't like okay. Well, I don't mind conquest because like there's I have literally no stress when I play conquest. Whereas I still get sometimes a little bit of like ladder anxiety, you know, because mm. when you play ladder. So sometimes it's nice to just hop in like a stress free environment and just like see how the deck feels. Um, it's obviously not the same in terms of like what you're going to get matched up against on conquest versus ladder, but it's at least like a good tester for how the deck feels. Um. So, yeah, but usually I just take it to the ladder and then 
Uh, you just gotta get your feet wet. Can I say something about Conquest and feel free to disagree? Um, yeah. I don't take Conquest to learn how to play against other decks. I take Conquest to, how, and to learn how to what I want to play when and when I don't want to. Like, it teaches me to play my deck, but it doesn't teach me how yeah. to play my oh, deck into the yes. meta. Yes, 100%. Right? I agree with that. Yeah, it's like, not, yeah, you're not looking for matchup uh, mm-hmm. spread and matchup knowledge with Conquest. You're literally just feeling like, how does the deck feel? Like, it, it dep- like you can tell when your deck is feeling good, regardless of matchup. Sometimes if they're running, like, crazy tech, you can't get a good feel, because you're like, I never got to execute my game plan. But a lot of the times you can just, like, feel, how, like, how it's performing and like whether mm-hmm. it's doing the thing you want it to often enough that you are comfortable with its power output and it's like reliability right. like like in a like or I, and honestly i do this in gold conquest because i don't actually care anymore but like sometimes it's like oh my opponent is playing iron man hella bullshit that I, or iron man uh tribunal shit i don't actually have an answer for that so i'm gonna lose but i can figure out what my play patterns are and what my best yeah. decisions are and like it w- obviously won't matter for this match but like once i know that i can take that elsewhere yeah i've taken cooks to like like i've taken like friends cooks uh mm-hmm. to um conquest and i came back i was like this feels great i got dumpster by hella tribunal but that's not a real deck so like but this feels so good <laughs> so so like it's also worth noting that gnome's friends are tanjo and woody and husky and shit though so like it's not like he's taking like you know new player xx32 <laughs> yeah i i you know there's if yeah i have good sources for for new and exciting decks i'll say that both yeah me and yeah. tanjo are, are lucky to to have friends that are good at the game so Uh, i actually want to prop woody for that like not like more than me or km i think if you want like just something completely fucking random that works go check out woody because his dumb shit works at a way higher rate than like everyone else's like i'll go on his stream be like what the fuck is that and then he's like oh i'm ranked two with this like, what how did you do that Oh, with Might the Namora seem. stuff especially. He yeah. was like, I can't believe people keep saying this is bad, and then he keeps posting his stats, and it's just like this red, like, the Namora mm-hmm. Wong deck, and he's like, I'm crushing with this. And, uh, He, yeah, be- he beat funny. me with that deck, and I was very annoyed. I was like, how am I losing to this? Yeah. Sometimes Wong comes down, and you're like, oh, shit. Like, uh-huh. yep. people, like, are like, I, I don't respect Wong because it's so easily counterable, and then they forget to run the, the cards that counter it, and they're like, oh. You, you better have that Magneto waiting. <laughs> yeah. Or, obviously, Cosmo. Yeah. Uh, Tanjo, I'm going to hand you a deck. How do you figure out how to pl- pilot it? Like, Woody messages you, and he's like, this deck is perfect for you. How do you learn it? What is your, What are your steps? When I ask him how to play it. <laughs> what does he tell you? Just play the cards, bro. Because that's what Woody yeah, is totally going to tell you. Woody li- loves this kind of responses. Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. You just... yeah, you got to figure out your output. you got to figure out how tall you can get. What are your game plans? Okay. Wait, let's let's go through that. Your, figure out your output. What is your output? What does output mean? Uh, you're going to try to see, like, if you do everything right, how many points can you get in the board in the average? So Okay. How like sometimes this matters so yeah no it matters a lot yeah it does it's important matter, yeah. overall like. like one of the things like we talked about getting uh gnome just said i get dumpstered by hella tribunal right your output has to be crazy high to beat that deck if it goes off and that's yeah. why you run tech cards yeah but it's, it's so that, inconsistent that you really don't care so oh yeah like if someone has it and you just don't see your tech cards like gg enjoy your one cube Right. Yeah, pretty much it. Yeah. Although it's probably no, it probably doesn't exist. Hella Tribunal can't exist anymore, right? Because negative two power Iron Man is absolutely yeah. terrible. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that deck dead? Yeah, it has to be right. It was dead. Well, already. yeah. I mean, it's not. It's always. It's never been like a ladder deck. But I, people love playing it in Conquest for some reason because they love being locked in games where their opponent can't do anything about it. <laughs> so they, but um, that's the least in- interesting shit in Conquest ever, though. Isn't yeah, it? for sure. You're like even if you win, people... you're just like, look, I did nothing, and my, yeah. I played solitaire and got a border. Congrats. I, yeah, that's what I like Conquest when you get like these interact, mm-hmm. like these like these battles where like you're both trying to like 
you know, answer each other's cards. And mm -hmm. like, I, I love mid range mirrors basically is what I'm trying to say. Where like both opponents are like actually looking at the board state and trying to like, it's like a tug of war and you're trying to like constantly like out tempo and out value your opponent and like respond and you have to react to their responses. And yeah, like decks like Kelly Tribunal and, and just normal Tribunal obviously don't do that. They're just like, I'm going to do my thing. And if you have it, you have it. Fair. All right. Let's talk winning in tournaments. Uh, Gnome won a tournament. Tanjo could bother to win a tournament, but apparently it's too much trouble for him to like, go win one. Uh, <laughs> are either of you, um, are you going to do the Snap Masters thingy, Majig? Uh, I heard about it. I don't know all the information on it, exactly I, I, what it entails. I don't know super well either. I was like, wait, who's involved? I want to sponsor that, so I'm sponsoring it. Oh, <laughs> but, um, okay, so you're sponsoring it, but you don't know. <laughs> you I mean, look, it? look, I, I, yeah, I, look, I've been, I know how to sign up. There's um, eight people, one to be announced, that are like invitees. It's like Lambie and Desmond and shit. Um, okay. And then there's like the top four of last time, and it's like two FAK, Sizer, and Spyro. And then there's two days of like play in, and then there's 350 hmm. in prizes from which I'm. I, I was originally like 40% of, but when I decided to donate a print, the other people did too. They were like, oh, cool. Awesome. And so like we're up to 350. But it's just like, it's great players playing each other. And I'm like, I love nothing more in Marvel Snap than really great players playing each other. And like, if you beat Lambie, like JD is he playing in it? Die. Yeah, he's in. He's in. He's invited. Mm -hmm. The invitees are already in the top whatever. I believe it's sixteen. Yeah. Um, and there's six open spots. So like, you mm -hmm. should because it's free to enter and it's awesome. It's definitely something I'll look into more if I have the time. Because <clears throat> I love tournaments, I really enjoy it. So. Tendra, win a tournament. Come on, I want to talk shit about you. Come on. I can't bother playing tournaments. It takes so long, much long. To Gnome had to stream you for this. grind ladder! <laughs> yeah, but I can stop when I want. I can do something else. I can play while I watch TV. That's much better. Yeah. I would Tournaments just are a way bigger commitment, for sure. Yeah. I would also like it noted that Tanjo is sitting at number one on ladder all the fucking time while watching TV. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's a very annoying statement, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, what's the best tournament tip? I guess this is for Gnome, because Tanjo's is just watch TV and play ladder. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is, and maybe this just speaks to how not aggressive I am on ladder, but I know for a fact I'm more aggressive on in tournaments, is you are locked in that game no matter how you feel about it. So you have to snap the most minuscule advantages because, like, there is no I'm going to try to find a better matchup in mm -hmm. in a tournament game, right? Like you you have this matchup and you have to win it. And it's it's different for um open deck list and closed deck list. So the tournament I recently played in was an open deck list, three deck format where you got to ban one. And I brought Surfer, Darkhawk and Loki, and I played zero games of Loki because every single one of my opponents banned it. Um because they felt it was a bad matchup. And so I went in with what, you know, I mean, I don't think anyone was considering Dark Hawk and Surfer A tier at the start of the tournament. But you just go in and you just, you know, you have to win uh, this matchup. So whatever advantage you can find, you snap it and use those 10 points of health that you have um, to the utmost efficiency. There is no like limping, there is no like cope staying. Uh, you only have 10 points of health and any single one of those lost is um, 10%, which is a huge number of, uh, especially because when you get into high stakes, like it can be like what just a retreat is 20% of your health, a retreat on turn one. So um, what I found from playing and also from watching top players is like, you you know, you're, you have a high level matchup when like there's a snap by turn th usually by turn three because people are snapping like any advantageous locations and um people are retreating on those like advantages or disadvantages and it like 
yeah, there's a lot of games that don't finish and go to the end if you're playing a good player, but that you have to be aggressive. You have to put pressure on your opponent and you can tell when you're playing a good player because you feel that pressure and you want to do the same to them. Andrew, anything to add? Well, I, I think I've only played a single tournament in my life, so I'm not the best one to seek out advice. But I do find fun, this dynamic that it, it gets when you play like every single location that is advantageous you snap. That's pretty that's pretty interesting. I I like that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. It's There's cool. Also- it's a very different feeling than ladder. There's also a thing that you get when you watch any of these top players play. Where like not every game, but a lot of the games are like, oh, this person is on and you get like an almost mini conquest match, right? Because the person knows exactly what their opponent is on. Like both players go in and it's like, oh, well, I just saw the name I don't know, who cares? Right? Like Yeah. Uh you know what's a really obvious one we've all seen? Strong guy. You saw a strong <laughs> guy and you know what strong guy is testing tonight. Right? And just like you yeah. open that, and strong guy knows your deck, and you know strong guy's deck, and those twelve are settled, and now you're just yeah. playing fundamentally a mini conquest run. Yeah, but at the same time, like you, you aren't going to be as aggressive, especially like if you know, I don't know, what mm-hmm. strong guys on some deck that's like favored into yours. Like even if you reach, if you have an advantageous location for your deck in that matchup, you're still overall you might be on favorite. So it's like not mm-hmm. worth the ladder cubes to like snap as aggressively but in conquest like you would snap that every single time right interesting so, yeah it's a different beast it's a different beast when you when you are forced to try to win that matchup versus i can try to find a better matchup on my next queue how how often are you holding a surprise card like shang chi for later rounds how often are you throwing early to win <laughs> uh so obviously different for opening close right the last uh Tourney I played was open, so don't hold surprise cards like Shang because they know they're in there. Um, <laughs> but for like a, I don't know, for a, um, for a closed deck list, or if you're just playing Conquest, which is effectively like closed deck list, um, mini closed deck list tournament. Uh, y- I would say like you don't necessarily hold them for later rounds. But if you have a tech card that's really good against their deck, like you have Shang against their whatever deck that runs a card bigger than 10, like <laughs> you want to pay... Sure, sure, your Red Skull. Yeah, sure, sure, your Red Skull. You you want to make them pay cubes to see it. And I think Jeff Hooglin is someone I watch a lot that like does a really good job at this. He's like, I have this tech card. I'm going to make my opponent pay to say... And he says it every time. Like he just mm-hmm. really like beats it home to his audience. And he's like, I'm going to make my opponent's pay cubes to see my tech card because if my tech card is going to win them uh win me this game i'm not letting my opponent like retreat for one um into it so yeah if you if you have a tech card i think like yeah make your opponents pay for information in, in a closed deck list or conquest format um because uh at the, the next game they're going to have that information about your deck so if you only got a cube out of it um maybe it wasn't worth it so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say hold it. Like, don't lose a game because you're trying to retain the element of surprise. You know? What if it's but, two cubes? Would you ever lose two and set up and hold it for a potentially better no. game? I would no? never I would never lose cubes to oh, try to get them in, like to get more later just because would you, you would only you have snap to try and make them. Absolutely. Either pay? Oh, boomer snapping is huge in co- like a lot. Mm-hmm more a lot better in tournaments that's another thing yeah boomer snapping's bad on ladder because like um well it's like mostly bad on ladder because um like they'll just retreat and you'll get you'll eco less value but in conquest like you can boomer snap them um a lot more often because like that if you force them to retreat um that is sometimes better than actually staying in the game like And there's a lot more bluffing, although I wouldn't recommend getting too into that because it takes a certain level of you plus your opponent to like actually bluff. Um, So I I wouldn't recommend bluff snapping, but it is definitely a thing. Um, I like bluff snapping in tournaments just fine. 
Um, look, I've yeah. played in a grand total of one tournament, but I've followed like a million um, Snap fans slash uh, Snap Battle Arena tournaments, like seven or eight. So like, yeah. Um, I love a good bluff snap, right? Like, I didn't draw. I play bounce, right? So I'm not gonna pretend I'm playing something else. But I didn't draw hit monkey. But if I drew hit monkey, I win. I will just snap on five and be like, yeah, pay me. There's right. I, if you yeah. snap back, I also, I'll run. But like, pay me. Yeah, I have a poker background, so like, there. I don't want to get too into the weeds of like, do it. Balance balancing your ranges. Yeah, but it's like if you're only that. boomer snapping when it's a bluff. Like it, this is a, like obviously this is assuming like you and your opponent have history, but if you are only boomer snapping as a bluff, you have to boomer snap sometimes as like not a bluff to like quote unquote mm-hmm. balance your range, um, and then you have to take into account things like like fold equity, um, or retreat equity as it would be called when it comes to like boomer snapping as a bluff and and just weighing in the the EV and stuff like that. There's yeah, I I really want someone to just make a video about like the deep dive. I actually saw that uh, um, S- Savage Yeti yeah, made that. One. Yeah, and I was like, there is like he did a fantastic job, but it was also like a, a six minute video, and I was like, mm-hmm. someone could do like an hour a- on on poker theory and snap, and I would so, be all for it. Yeah, I, I told him, and he's ridiculous because Yeti could be huge if he was just like, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take different decks through different poker theories everyone would watch him he would be humongous but he's frustratingly frustrating all right tanjo how, you seem to agree with the poker theory thing can you explain how you use poker theory well i'm not sure exactly but i do agree with the boober snap thing i rarely boober snap mostly because i know i'm never doing it as a bluff i know that i know that people don't really respect snaps that often mm. Some people like you have to know your opponents, but yeah, I I know that I don't I I don't see myself boomer snapping turn six. Like, yeah, boomer snaps turn six. Yeah, but I don't see myself boomer snapping as a bluff. So sometimes I get scared that like if I'm against my friends, if I boomer snap husky, if I boomer snap woody, I I feel like they would know that that something's off because I usually don't do it. So I feel like balancing what you're doing, it's it's good. So if you usually snap. Like, if you're a very aggressive snapper, you snap a lot of times, you can definitely snap bluff a lot. But if your opponent, if you usually don't snap that much, I feel like, I don't know if this applies to everyone, because I'm thinking of my environment that we all play each other a lot, so. I know the answer to this. Because I don't play all the same players, right? Like, I've played really low rank players and really high rank players. Uh, high rank players respect snaps, and low rank players don't respect snaps. Period. Like, as Most I was like players. when I first, well, yeah, obviously there's exceptions, right? Like, but overall, like when I was trying to climb, like when I got to around one thousand, and I was snapping, people were just retreating. Hey, and when you... I'm lower than like a thousand, if I snap, ninety percent of people are just like, "Fuck you, let's do it." And like, they're losing way more cubes than they're winning by doing that, right? But it doesn't matter because their rank is low and they don't care. Right, but like as soon as you get higher, that snap means something because these people's cubes matter to them, and yeah. so that they're like far more likely to run. That's a good tip. When you get a snap, you gotta like think, really think about what does this snap mm-hmm. mean, and how does the board mm-hmm. look like after that if I can come back. So if you're on the, I mean, if you're yeah. evaluating a retreat, you gotta really think about that. Sometimes people just ah, oh, well, they they're probably gonna do this, but I'm gonna stay. I wanna see what happens. But usually, if you just visualize it. And think how the game is gonna play out. You can probably feel figure out if it's gonna if you're gonna win or lose. You don't need to stay to see and realize by turn six they're just dead. Hey, quick estimate. How many games do you think you finish for just two cubes? Like, like no like retreats. No, one, no, no one one snaps. Just two no snaps, no end with you, two cubes. You just played a normal card game, basically uh-huh. the snap mechanic That's didn't very exist. Rare for yep. me. It's yeah, a lot too. less rare for me because I'm less aggressive than Tanjo at snapping, as signified by my rank disparity from his. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. I mean, there yeah, are some okay. matchups that I never snap, so if I'm against a player that uh, don't, doesn't snap back, usually it's for two cubes. Or if we're just mm-hmm. very even one of each other, it usually doesn't, it's not worth snapping. But most of my games, somebody's going to snap because somebody's going to see an advantage and uh, bounce on it, so... It's very rare. 
<laughs> Tanjiro also is a huge proponent of uh, what I call the bully snap. So mm-hmm. this will be that's, a that's, low... that's why I don't like playing it. Literally, yeah. that's it. Because I well, feel bullied. It's... I'm just like, ah, no, 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 no. Yeah, but there's also like a... I, I mean it more in the sense of like Tanjiro sees like, I don't know, sentinel come set collector mm-hmm. sentinel come down and it's like she doesn't respect like it dad you could talk about mm-hmm. this but yeah just like if I, I, see, I don't res- yeah if i see a bad card if i see a colossus if i see a card that like an ant-man combined with an avatar that not a good lot of good players use if i see if i see that it's a pool two player or something like that i'm gonna mm-hmm. snap because i know that i'm better than them and i probably gonna win the game so might as well snap it yeah, that makes perfect yeah. sense to me. All right, we call so it, what it rankest. Yeah, <laughs> Husky calls it rank- rankest. Yeah. yeah, I mean, okay, fair enough. Um, to what extent are tournament decks the same as ladder decks? Uh, I think they're. I think they're similar. I don't think there's necessarily a like. I think good decks on ladder are going to be good decks in tournaments because they're good decks. But at the same time, like I, you want to take decks that have a more even match of spread mm-hmm. than you might want to take to ladder. Like you can climb with whatever crazy combo deck you want on ladder if you really wanted to. But um, BBAK you, time. Yeah, exactly. Like you just yeah, BBAK take a negative. Mm-hmm. But um, like in conquest, like I said, you're locked in, right? So it's it's if you get locked in with a bad matchup, you you just Loose. Uh, so yeah, take a more a deck with a better matchup spread, and and you should be good. But at this, like, but like I said, I think a good ladder deck is also a good conquest deck. So you heard it here first. Put cost one every deck. Yep. Also, yeah, do that for sure. <laughs> Tantra will snap you. You will win games on tournaments. Be great. One All thing right. I, I'm not the most qualified to talk about. Tournament decks, but one thing that I find really interesting is that every tournament seems to have like low key Thanos decks. Mm-hmm. And I've never played against them because nobody plays them on ladder. And it, it really is really interesting that they're always there. Oh man. Yeah. They're they're really good. I play I had like a seventy I played last season when um what was it, Rain had that version. I played it on ladder at whatever my like close good enough rank is to play good players. Um and I had like a seventy percent win rate with it. I just got bored. I I never understood it. I've been with Tanjo. Like I don't like the whole Loki in Thanos. I guess it makes more sense in a tournament because so it did your you hand break? More... It's yeah. just did your hand break because Thanos like new Thanos yeah. is like your hand breaks right? Like because you're just like Thanos, Mockingbird. I don't know. Call Loki and you're like, all right. Well, I drew bullshit. I drew bullshit. I drew a draw stone. Let's Loki yeah. and just play your deck better and call it a day. But if you yes. if Thanos breaks, doesn't it like mean that you drill all the top end? So sometimes you draw all the top end and Loki. Yeah, but yeah, but and Loki without isn't your top gets, end like really good. It's not that great. Wait, if repeat you, what you said. Sorry. If you haven't done anything by turn four and you, you just play Loki without Queen Jet, I don't think it's good enough. Um, I mean, sometimes it is because Loki's kind of OP, mm-hmm. right? Like, sure, sometimes you just retreat, right? Like, that's the output range stuff, right? Like, if your opponent's playing an Eyeless and, like, then, like, a reason one of the time just being like, oh, look, your card's a bit cheaper is pretty good at winning that matchup. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe. It is, it, I, I am with you, Tanjo. I don't, yeah. like, it, I don't play the deck a bunch, so I'm, I guess. I mean, look, you guys are way better than I am. But... No, no, no. We're not. I'm not that's saying why that. It's just like well, that, I, I don't know, but that's just, like why I'm I was also, successful with it. Yeah, I. It's just like it. Well, it clearly the deck's good because it keeps showing up in tournaments <laughs> way more than it shows up on ladder. Like you never yeah. see Loki Thanos on ladder. Never. I've never seen one Loki Thanos on ladder. Well, I probably have, but like definitely not in the past whatever couple months. So it's just weird that it keeps showing up in tournaments. Hmm. So we sort of discussed this, so we can just skip that last question. How do you test a deck? Proving grounds supposed to have a ladder. Uh, Tanjo just takes it to the top of ladder and says, I'll figure it out because I'm a beast. <laughs> and no one plays it in Conquest and then takes it to ladder and figures it out because he's a beast. Sounds fair? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. All Very right. into the week. 
This brings us to our final segment of each and every episode, the variant of the week. All right, there's a lot of right opinions and wrong opinions here. We'll start with the left. These, uh, I believe that is the Ryan uh, Gonzalez, right? Yeah. Variant. Um, who picked that variant? That was me. I. Why'd you pick that? I don't know. He's, he's so cute. He's look at his little sunglasses. He's in the claw machine. I don't know. It's the cutest Jeff, in my opinion. I like it. <laughs> It's my second favorite. All right. Who picked the one on the far right here? The Dan Hip. Obviously, I'm the Dan Hip. Um, if there's one card that the Dan Hip is the best art for, it's Jeff. Because Jeff is like the perfect Dan Hip character. Uh, that means, Tanjo, you picked the Gwenpool variant? Yes. I mean,. I'm not the. I'm not sure why. It's the one I have, so it <laughs> kind of makes sense hey, that I like it. Got to dance with the one that brought you. So uh, I definitely, definitely understand that one. Um, all right, I picked the Jeff with a fish because I mean it's just adorable. Like he's sitting on a surfboard, like a boogie board. Like how could you not love this? It's like Disney esque cute. All right. That brings us to the end of each episode. And as we move towards the end of each episode, we uh, let our loyal listeners learn more about where they can engage with our guests and where to find them and what they would find. So, Tanjo, if our loyal listeners and viewers become your loyal listeners and viewers, what would they get out of your content? So yeah, I'm I I'm planning on streaming more in the future when I get the time. So I just plan plan on streaming top ladder gameplay. Every single season I'm I've been fi- I finished on the top ten. So I'm probably gonna be on the top ten if you're gonna watch it. And I just you should expect some quality gameplay with some commentary and I have a lot of friends and the streaming community, so we're going to see a lot of the non-people on my chat and interacting with me. Sir? May I? May I? Alright, so um, Tanjo is generous. I'm like, I think that's the key word. He really, like, he likes the community, he cares about the community, he likes the people in the community, he likes sharing decks, he likes sharing ideas. And I don't think this is controversial at this point. He's brilliant. Like, so he's sharing things that work, that are great, that are worth knowing, that are worth following with like kindness and like, honestly, like, and you can yell at me if I'm wrong, but kind of ridiculous humility at this point, given your success. You are so humble, given like the ridiculous amount of success you've had in this game. Um, but like, you're just ridiculously super approachable and kind. And I don't know. That seems like the kind of person I like to support. So hopefully our viewers feel the same way. Thank For you. now, check them out on Twitter. Appreciate and it. Then yeah, it's just the truth. Cool. All right. So, Gnome, thank you so much for being again here again. Remind our loyal listeners and loyal viewers what they would get from you if they tuned in and where they can find you and where they can engage with you. Uh, you'll find me on Twitch at gnome underscore underscore plays, often pumping because I can never seem to climb when I'm on stream. Um, but that's okay. We play fun decks. We hang out. Um, and yeah, same thing on Twitter. Same at. And I like to shit post and post decks. That's what I do on Twitter. So. <laughs> <laughs> you barely post on Twitter. You post way too little. But on your stream, um, Gnome remains one of my favorite Marvel Snap streams. It's the single best stream, my personal opinion. I could be wrong, but my personal opinion is the single best stream to watch if you want to watch top decks and have, be, and have them explain to you and how to be played. If you want to see this is a thing that really works, I mean, there's plenty of experimental stuff too, but like, honestly, it works 90% of the time anyway. That's why I keep featuring them. But, like, you watch the deck, and um, 
unless he's being bullied by his friends. Gnome explains exactly how to play that deck to chat. Like, occasionally he'll just have to yell at butt and baby and shit like that, right? Like, he'll just be like, shut up! I'm trying to play! But, you know, outside of those times, it's like, here's this plane, here's exactly the way I'm making it, here's what I'm thinking about while I'm making it. And, like, considering that this is a really great player, that is extremely valuable information for the community. And when he loses it and tries to murder his friends, that is also very amusing. Thank you, Blazer. No problem. I'm um, also often in there. Glazer's also often in there. And, yeah. uh, but I, I don't bully you. Too. Yeah, you <laughs> do not bully. You bully me significantly less than most of my Twitch chat. <laughs> I've also gotten the nickname over the last little bit. Uh, gnome underscore underscore stays. KM called me Gnome stays in his most recent video. <laughs> because I, I was confused. stay a lot. I, yeah, so like it's become a meme within my community. So yeah, come and bully me for, for staying in games that I definitely have no business being in. <laughs> I love hey. the... In KX chat, then like he's like debating if he's gonna stay, and they say, "Oh, no, we we'll stay here," and then KX stays. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me all Aww. be so lucky to be bullied by KM Best. So, uh, let's move on to my favorite segment of each and every episode, where Glazer is going to reward our patrons who pay the appropriate amount of money. Immaculate vibes, those patrons, Aaron. Go ahead. I'd like to say thank you to our $10 patrons, Abigail Gieslin, Mandatory Burnout, Cables, Irregardless, David G. Wingfield, Direwolf, LAB, Fathor Newman, Good Dog Gamer, This Is The Way, Inc., I Am Frostman, J. Neverit, J.D. McDonaldino, Caretex Lee, Koi Ray, Pyrofrost, The Goat Seeker, Dan Man Falcon, Doc D, Batnick, Doku, Ginger Prime, Philip Rakovich, Racco, Haplo, Kenny Loggins of the Danger Zone, Rob Silverman, uh, Old Dirty The Bizza, X Force V and Skippy G, Snapdragon's League One Champion, Tommy Nyquist, the King of Bros, Black Dahlia, the Great Kazoo, Jessica Gamble, Ryan Wood, Kefsiota, Ludacris, Louis Antunes, Mod Supreme Models, Darth Tater, Rame Setala, Brian Kaufman, Tristan H. Martin, Jason B, welcome to the group, The Fuzzy Dunlop, Spectrum X, Matt H, Mikey Hijinks, No Flex, Ecularis, Greg Starry, Pretty Chill, Seamus, Spike Jones, Jonesy, Two Ties, The Pirate King, Tucker, The Homie Men, and of course, Getting T, where the T stands for someone is typing. Yes, they are, and you are definitely <laughs> typing into that slide because it's growing each and every week. So thank you, everybody, for your support. All right, before we finally sign off, I'm just going to remind folks where they can engage with us. Our Twitter is at SnapJustCast on Twitter. Join the Marvel Snap Zone Discord, of which we are the proud official podcasting partner our email is snapjudgmentspodcast at gmail.com and of course our youtube which statistically speaking you are almost certainly listening to this on is at snap judgments pod daily snap takes there all right with that shameless self-promotion out of the way Dan- uh, tanjo thank you so much for joining us for the first time you're incredibly insightful and you are welcome back anytime Thank you. I had a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. Gnome, thank you for joining the multiple special guest Hall of Fame with so many luminaries. And <laughs> I'm honored. Glazer. So we have many people who have been on this show many times. All right, Aaron, we've reached the end of the episode, which is where I get to say I appreciate doing this show with you each and every week. Thank you so much for being here. My friend. Peace and peace and love, everybody. All right, friends. That officially, completely, and totally brings us to the end of this episode. So until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and keep on snapping.